Hi guys, um, today we are here with Ben Dobson of Dotsup and we will talk about how you can get a job in the sport digital business. So thanks. Thanks, Ben, to come here and for this short interview. And so the first question would be, so there are many companies and many sport people that uh, are in the digital sport business and there are many people that are keen to enter into this industry. So can you explain a little bit how you did it and, and how you got to be head of sport partnership in your company? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, thank you for having me in. Great to be here. Um, always delighted to talk shop. Uh, yeah, so I guess not to go too long here, but um, which, <laughs> thanks especially for the yeah, years. absolutely, absolutely. I'll try and be concise. Um, I guess it's a mixture of for me, it was sort of skill set meets passion, you know. And I think for everybody in sport. You need those two things, but in terms of the chronology for me, I think the skill set came first and the passion that I had allowed me to get here. It wasn't a linear sort of progression within the company. So um, I, I guess, you know, I'm a marketing guy, first and foremost, and uh, marketing took me then into a, a localization business. Um, so in the UK, they call called LSPs, uh, Language Service Providers. Um, quite a dry industry in all honesty but um, you know globalization is here everybody needs to localize content um, and from that marketing sort of role I began to get influence and eventually uh, an overarching role across both sales and marketing and the great thing about that is you get to sort of pick what your ideal client looks like and that's really where the passion came in where I saw I felt, and I still feel to this day, that there was a huge white space in sport. Um, you know, everybody's trying to grow internationally. If you've saturated your domestic market, how can you bring more fans to the the foray, if you like, and and uh, commercialise those? So, yeah, and that's where we went. And for anybody that's not aware of .sub and localization as a whole, it's uh, effectively subtitles, which can seem quite abstract. But when you think about how we consume content, it's invariably on a mobile device, it's invariably across social media, muted by default, and you're likely in an environment like this, you might be in work where it's not socially acceptable to put the volume on. Yeah. So when you consider all of those things, um, I saw a huge opportunity for the way that people consume that content. So to, to fast forward, that was in a, um, a UK-based LSP, Dotsub is actually based in the United States and through traveling, through work, there was an opportunity to come in there and again I was asked, which is always great in your career, what, you know, where would you like to take the business, where do you see the growth? And I, I, you know, I guess I'm missing out a few milestones along the way but that's sort of how I ended up in this role as, as Head of Sports Partnerships. Great, and you talked for something that is very important for who is, who is listening especially, talk about the skills of a person mm. should have to catch this job or at least to try to get a job in the sport business. So what, what do you think are the main important skills that a person like us mm. has to have or a person that is keen to enter in this, in this sector need to have? Yeah, absolutely. Now I think it's a mixture of um, you know, skills you can acquire for experience, for hard work, for gaining qualifications. <coughs> Um, and also then, it's a lot of innate stuff as well, you know, you as a person, and I, I think yeah. it's a blend of the two. Uh, for me, to talk personally about my experience, um, again, I'll always approach from marketing, which does play such a huge part in sport. There's lots of different terms that get thrown under marketing, now, digital transformation, you know, fan engagement, there's new buzzwords entering every couple of months, but I think marketing gives you a good... Or less, probably. Or less, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and I, I think that marketing gives you a great kind of overview, it's a really good, it's almost like Latin for languages. Yeah. I think if you've got marketing and you're coming into to sport, I think that gives you the agility you know, to move into a business development role, to move into to sort of sales, 
and you know sticking with that digital side as well. So I think for me they are essential skills and then just to you know juxtapose that then with people's personality and what you have uh, you know for me I feel a lot of the success I've had and you know what I've enjoyed my time uh, in the industry has been just you know very cliche but being yourself being personable making connections not always looking for the quick win yeah being somebody that's you know try to be generous with your time and be really appreciative of people that are generous with theirs yeah you know because uh, you I think you, you relate to this. There was a day where we all started at the, the bottom floor here. Exactly. And the only way you, you know, to use that analogy, move up is by, by you know, making connections, being yeah. willing to help. Yeah. That's 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 absolutely true. And I think um, an important point that you mentioned is about networking, right? So absolutely. how you are, your skills of networking, and <laughs> you can have already, or you can learn how to network. Um, and networking at the end is extremely important for getting a job, uh, getting in front of an interviewer, yeah. but also the possibility to uh, to expand your your contact networks, and then having the chance to meet the, the decision makers that maybe one day they could try to uh, hire you yeah. for 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 the new venture. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you you've hit the nail on the head there, and there are so many things you can learn. There's a lot of you know we. We live in an age where you're never short of information out there. So absolutely look at you know best practice. Um, but as we said before we started rolling here, a lot of it is is trial and error as well. Putting yeah. yourself um, you know, putting yourself in those those vulnerable situations where you don't know anybody in a room. Um, go out there, make connections. And I was thinking on my way here today, actually, yeah. that the people have been significant for me along the way. And you close a contract, and why you were coming here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, I actually, two. And, uh, what was my th Three. Three. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, to, to try and land on an answer here, um, uh, you know, some of the people I met at my very first conference uh, a few years back with, with, with Sport, you know, I've stayed in touch with them to this day. And I guess that's three, four years ago, and never done a lick of business with either of these guys. And then a, a great project we just converted a few weeks back. And again, it's it's not through playing the long game, but it's through networking, you know, staying in touch, um, yeah, putting yourself on that circuit. And you also mentioned before something that uh, is extremely important. So, how a person that is not still in this industry mm. can um, you know, can learn from people like us mm. that are in the industry and how can learn faster or can learn better. Mm. What, what, what's the suggestion you could give to, you know, to a person that, okay, I understand that I have to work for my personal career on mm. this area. Mm. What, what are the areas that you think, in, especially probably in the digital area, digital sport business that a person should should work, should learn um, uh, before before going in front of a camp, in front of uh, an interview. Yeah, I think that's great. I think the irony is, uh, Fabio, a lot of it is to use a marketing term again, it's positioning. Yeah. So I think I spoke at the beginning of this conversation about how um, I saw subtitles as playing a big role, and I still do. Yeah. But when I turned up at a conference um, at Leaders in Sport a few years back, there was this talk about fan engagement. And that's when I realized that the subtitles didn't mean anything to anybody in that room. But when it was positioned as a fan engagement, a yeah. global fan engagement, well, I was away at the races then. Yeah. And I think, you know, to your point, to your point, what can people do? What skills can they have? What can they build upon? Maybe take stock of what you've got. Listen to what the market is asking for. Listen, look yeah. at the opportunities in sport, and yeah. see how they align. Because again, it's a lot of positioning. Um, that that yeah. that's what I would say. It's not I necessarily agree. having to completely um, reinvent yourself. Yeah. It's looking at what you've got and how does that apply. And then prove that you could do this job. Prove that you could do a better job than another person, right? And then it's, it's also about the results that you could bring to a company. It could be 
on on an engagement side, on on a monetization side, what you could bring that yes. other people cannot bring, right? Absolutely. And look at the parallels as well. Maybe you've worked, you know, in the pharmaceutical industry, but you've had success at breaking into, you know, uh, to China, to India, you know, two core markets exactly. that we're seeing. Yeah. You have seen how business is done there. All of a sudden, it's not so abstract. It's very yeah. relevant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that's what I would say. One of the areas that is very now trendy, but it will be probably trendy for the next next years is, and I, I know that you guys are working a little bit on, on that, uh, is artificial intelligence, mm. right? How AI is impacting uh, the digital sport business. Mm. So, um, and um, yeah, how, how do you see that, especially for people that are now starting to look at entering this industry? It's, it's pretty important to know that this area will, will grow and grow and grow and grow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, AI, you know, we hear about blockchain, we hear about kind of digital transformation, all of those kind of buzzwords. But when you cut them down, they're essentially advancements in technology. They're kind of no different, if you like, to everything that's gone before. The difference has been they're new. Yeah. And um, this is a great opportunity maybe for people that are checking this out today you know human nature dictates that the more comfortable we get the more adverse we are to change and people who are in the industry are not necessarily just this industry across life yeah there's a very temptation to get comfortable and with that then it becomes an inertia but the flip side of that is for anybody that's hungry and is new to an industry you're willing to embrace things because everything is new quite yeah. frankly yeah um, and AI for us in our world, it's, uh, it comes under the form of ASR, another acronym which is Automated Speech Recognition. Okay. Um, you know, for those of us at home, it's Alexa or Siri. Yeah. But we, we're seeing that now playing a really big part in you know, taking interviews and taking press conferences, um, a lot of those content pieces. And it's using that effectively. It's not getting rid of the human, the human element. It's, it's complementing it and finding a way to figure it into your workflow. Yeah. And that's what I'd say, I'd say, AI just falls into it. It's a technological enhancement that, that can be used effectively. Yeah. It's not necessarily doing away with all the best practice before, but rather putting a new spin on it and refining the process. Yeah. That's what I'd say. So we talk about blockchain, we talk about <laughs> AI, we talk about <laughs> digital transformation. <laughs> So the big question is, what, what's next, right? What's next in the, in, yeah. in the industry, and especially in the digital sport industry? Yeah, it's funny. Um, Difficult it's, question. Absolutely, and when, you know, <laughs> when we spoke uh, about this opportunity to sit down, that was something that was mentioned, you know, and I, and I, I think I joked, if, if I knew that, you know, quite frankly, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> it would be a secret. Yeah, yeah, it would be a secret. I would have patented it, and I would have rolled it out. Um, no, it's tough. It's tough to say what's, what the next big thing is because I, I, I think the industry is uh, you know, evolution or evolution as opposed to revolution. Yeah. We, we evolve to things. I agree. I think when we look back, um, when you look back at industries, you look back in time, it's very kind of convenient and revisionist to say, oh, this happened, that happened, but there were iterative things along the way. Uh, so again, to, to land on an answer here, I would say, there's an abundance of data out there, you know, there's yeah. so much data, it's, poor, it's coming out of people's pores. But then we, we're also, you know, people talk about millennials and Generation yeah. Z and how they, they favour, you know, experiences over everything else. So I think it's trying to find that kind of online digital insight, that abundance of data, and merging it with, you know, we're in sport, and ultimately sport is entertainment. And yeah. People want to be entertained, they want to feel something, which is why we all love sport, it's emotive. So I think it's, it's gonna be, and I know the NBA touched upon this, I'm thinking <laughs> at a conference I was at, it's taking all of those insights and that profiling, yeah. and bringing that, when that fan attends a, a live game, a live, a live match, you know, trying to make those two worlds meet. I think that's maybe the, the next, you know. I, I, I do like the idea of matching online and offline mm. and how you can match it is, is probably the the most important thing, right? Yeah. To catch the success of organization, especially in the sport industry. Yeah. I think so. You know, easier said than done. An awful lot of hoops to jump through. And again, it can't be contrived. It, 
And I think that should be it as well. Um, I think for success in this business and when you're introducing these, you know, the next big thing technologies, I think it's better to have a, um, I heard a great expression, a compass as opposed to a map. Yeah. So you've kind of got a north side where you want to end up, but you don't do steps for the sake of them. And if you've got a very rigid kind of road map, the chances are that you're not going to be listening and you know, watching the market change. And if you don't stay nimble and agile and look at trends and opportunities, that's when you're going to miss out. Yeah. Yeah. So last, last question for you would be, uh, how do you see Ben in the next three, four years? What would be the next, next dream of your, of your career, for your good career so far? Uh, yeah, well, thank you, first of all. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, for me, I, I, you know, I really love the opportunity that's there with localization. I think that's great. But again, that's very aligned with just, just adding value and helping solve problems. So I think for me, to stay content, it will be um, you know, staying in this industry and always making sure that the, the next step is adding value and solving problems. Yeah. I, I feel really lucky to, to, to offer a service, a product, that, that truly does come in and revolutionise the way that, that people, um, that sports properties engage with engage, their fans. Yeah. And I think that's essential, whether, whether in four The years, magic word is always engage. Always engage. Especially in the sports, right? Absolutely. Yeah, if yeah. you want to get some of these, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. mentioned engage, but I think that's it. If, it become, if you're labouring a point and you're not moving the needle forward, I, I think you know, that does make uh, you, you're not contributing to the industry. So I think for me, over the next you know, four or five years, however many years, is to make sure that um, always trying new things, adding value, and yeah, and as you said, seeing what, what's coming next and being willing to embrace that. And not, not, no fear of failure as well. Try exactly. and new things, try new things for your clients. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. So thanks, hey. man. It's been thanks a pleasure. Thank you. If you like this video, uh, like the videos and subscribe to the channel.